save 10% with my code Bobby10. Just kidding, guys. Today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, as promised, we're going to continue with the Prophet series today with Salih and the nation of Thamud. As always, guys, if you like the content, leave us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And with no further ado, let's have a look. They were large human beings. When I say large, I'm talking of huge human beings. Giving them wealth, giving them health, giving them strength. What they used to do is they used to carve homes out of the mountains. Each little mountain became the home of another giant. They worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these people were of the nation known as Thamud. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He sent a prophet to them to remind them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, O my people, worship Allah. You have no God other than Him. They said they wanted a sign. They go to choose their miracle. Out of this rank we want a she camel to come out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought forth a she camel. Naqatullah. The she camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So gigantic and big. That they ah, ran away again, from it. So much screaming. Don't you dare to harm it. So loud. Don't you dare to do anything wrong to it or else. Allah will punish you, I see the punishment. So they slew or they slay the she-camel and insolently defied their Lord's command and challenged Saleh saying, bring us that which you threaten us with if you are a messenger. And then the punishment came. This is just a continuation of our last video. Of course, I thought that all the giants have been destroyed. Please let me know in the comment section who those new giants are now. Because all I know coming from an Orthodox Christian perspective is that there were giants and in Christianity. They are called the Nephilim. However, once they've been wiped out, I thought they were gone forever. In this description, however, we have a new generation of giants. Who are those? Allah punished them with different punishments. Punishments. The first punishment, Allah shook the ground under them. From the terror and the fear, they fell on their knees and they couldn't move. Then the second punishment will follow. A severe thunder that made them collapse on the ground. And then it was the Sayha. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala, amma ba'd. 
The people that came after Ad went back to the worship of one God because they were believers, but they died out and they had children and the shaitan came again and he oh, okay. gave them ideas and the desires began to play again. The that temptations began to play again and people went back subhanallah to worshiping different types of idols. Oh, there was a village, this time it was a village in a mountainous area northwest of the lands of Arabia and these people were of the nation known as Thamud. Thamud is the son or one of the children of Ad. He migrated the northwest of the Arabian Peninsula in a city called Al Hijr. Al Hijr is the rocky track. They used to live in a rocky track. It's a very rocky area. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has named a whole surah in the Quran after them known as Surah Al Hijr. And their dwellings are still present up to now. Roughly 380 kilometers northwest of Medina Al Munawwara. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon the tribe of Thabud the way he had bestowed upon the tribe of Ad, given him wealth, given him health, given him strength, given him knowledge. They got gardens, they got power, they were large human beings. When I say large, I'm talking of huge and human beings. And the be only logical explanation for this phenomena is found in the Quran yet again, that life is a test. Otherwise, all of this is absolutely meaningless and has no point whatsoever. It is only Islam that proposes a spiritual solution, so to speak, that this dunya, this creation is a test. A test of how to worship God. A test of recognizing that there is only one God worthy of worship. This is truly the only religious theological explanation that makes any sense whatsoever. If you look into Christianity, for example, you have the gospel of salvation. You have the principles that Jesus Christ died for your sins and now you reach salvation through him. But what has happened prior to Jesus Christ? What's up with all those people? Of course, there is a loophole in Christianity where Jesus himself descended into hell to preach the gospel over there. But ultimately, you understand, I understand that this is irrational because people that haven't heard about the gospel, they haven't heard about that God came to earth as a man and died for our sins are not saved. How is this logical? Or you look into other religions. For example, in Buddhism, you don't even have a God. Everything just is. But doesn't that allow then everything to happen? Why is there a moral construct at all in place if you don't have God and everything simply is? Or you look into Hinduism and you have so many different deities. Amongst them, you have gods, quote unquote, of destruction that want to kill. They require sacrifice and what? not. It is only Islam that proposes that we are created with a natural predisposition, aka the fitra, to worship one God. And everything else is confusion and deviation from that natural state. They had lots and lots of wealth. They also followed their forefathers. They were even more advanced in their technology than their former cousins Ad. What they used to do is they used to carve homes out of the mountains, right? And it's just not just a cave. It's an actual like castle that's built into the mountains. They felt so secure. What did they begin to say? Nothing can harm us. Not at all. Earthquake cannot harm it. Wind cannot affect it. Hurricane, tornadoes. I mean, it's rock, solid rock. You are in the middle of the mountain. So they used to feel that they are secure from anything. Nothing can harm them. They worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The type of idol that the people of Samud were following weren't only statues. They did follow statues, subhanAllah. But they had an associate idol. And that was themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal, He sent to them a great prophet. A prophet that they recognized and they knew from among them. Allah says, And to Thamud we sent their brother Salih. He said, O my people, worship Allah. You have no God other than Him. 
And this for me really cements the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, because he preserved the message and showed us that there was a red threat. He showed the generations to come over a thousand years later that there was a red threat to be followed and that the prophets always came with the same message. I know for born Muslims this is nothing new, but for somebody like me, a revert, this is absolutely groundbreaking because it shows you that there is only one true religion. And this is what everybody is asking all the time if they are interested in theology that is. Which one is the real religion? Is it Judaism? Is it Christianity? What is the real religion? But only Islam proposes a concept that every single messenger came with the same message and that there is only one religion based upon the first human being. All the Abrahamic faith will agree that Adam was the first human being. If that is so, the question naturally becomes, what was Adam's religion? It cannot be Christianity, it cannot be Judaism, it cannot be Buddhism, it cannot be Hinduism. And if you look into those concepts, for example, Christianity, it is based upon Christ, it is based upon Jesus. You look into Buddhism, it is based upon the Buddha. Yet again, with Islam, on the other hand, you don't have that attachment to a person. Islam means submission to God. And this is the only religion, if you think about it logically. What did Adam do before he apostatized pretty much? He submitted his will to God. He obeyed God. This was his primordial natural religion. And this is why we say that everybody was a Muslim. But by hearing those statements, people will say, oh, those stupid Muslims, how can they believe that everybody was a Muslim? Islam is a new religion. Guys, the new aspect of the religion of Islam would be the Sharia revealed by Prophet Muhammad. This is the update, if you will, in law, in conduct. However, the core essence of the religion, the submission to God, submitting your will to God and not to anything else, is this primordial natural religion that has been found with Adam, that has been found with Abraham, who wasn't a Jew, which was found with Jesus, who was born in a Jewish context. However, he critiqued the Pharisees that they added certain things, certain man-made things, into the religion. You can find that in the Bible as well. And this is why every single prophet reminded us of returning our worship to God alone. And Saleh alayhi salam is an Arab prophet. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he said, four prophets and messengers are Arab. Hud, Saleh, Shu'aib, and your prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Salih was a young man and he was very intelligent and strong and he was from a noble family. He was from the high class of the society and they were preparing him to be their leader and they were looking forward that one day he will assume responsibility for the people of Samud. They had a lot of expectations in Salih and suddenly Salih presented them with the message of Islam. So what happened? They said, Oh Saleh, we had so much hope in you. We were busy preparing you to make you our leader. How can you now come to us and stop us from what our forefathers have been doing all along? They we were had not hope guided in you. either. Now you decided to become a priest. You decided to become someone who wants to preach to us. You're claiming to be a messenger. Mm. We are in doubt regarding that which you are calling us towards. We are in clean doubt. What was the message of Sayyidina Salih alayhi salam? The same message that all the prophets came down with. And what did they, they say? Oh my people, worship Allah. There is no other Lord besides Allah. There is no other God besides Allah. There is no other deity besides Allah. Salih told and that is Islam. Do you understand? These people look at the gifts of Allah upon you. People still don't get Allah it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established you on earth and he has granted you growth on this earth and he has granted you multiplication. So now you should do two things. Seek forgiveness from Allah. Thereafter return back to him. Inna Rabbi qareebun mujib. Allah is indeed very near and he will respond. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says and about Thamud had I denied their messengers 
When their brother Salih told them, Don't you fear Allah Azza wa Jal? I am a trustworthy messenger from Allah. So fear Allah and obey Him. And I do not ask you anything worth in return. Wow. I'm not asking you to pay me as a messenger. I'm not asking you to make me a king over you. I'm not asking wealth from you. I'm not asking anything in return. All I want you is to fear Allah and to go back to Him and save yourself from the hellfire. My rewards come from Rabbil Alameen, Allah Azza wa Jal, the Lord of this universe. But they were corrupt. And their Nabi Salih alayhi salam told them, Do not go about making mischief on the earth. They were very corrupt people. He reminded them, O oh my people, remember that Allah has made you successors after the people of Aad whom he destroyed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you so much that he has given you abodes on this earth such that you have taken homes, you have built your castles in the valleys. And on top of that, you have these resorts or these huge palaces that, that are made of rock in the top of the mountains. So Salih alayhi salam warned them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. Allah azza wa will punish you and Allah will destroy you the way he destroyed your predecessors. And this is truly the warning that I got by reading the Quran. The Quran clearly told us that those nations have been destroyed. I personally came to believe that this is a reality that we can face as well if we become too boastful, too decadent. And of course, we see ourselves being exactly that. Absolutely proud, absolutely boastful, arrogant and thinking that we are the rulers of the world, that everything lays in our hands, that we have control over everything. But people really believe that they are making the rules. They don't understand the true justice of God. They don't understand that it is absolutely just for God to wipe us out if we do not obey the standard of goodness. In the atheist mind, you have no standard of right and wrong. You can do whatever feels good. However, in the theological mind, you of course have an objective truth, an objective right and wrong. And if you go astray, if you go against this, path, you will suffer directly, indirectly, in the afterlife and moreover potentially suffer even worse consequences such as the wiping out of societies. Of course, the naturalist cannot subscribe to this idea. They really believe that natural catastrophes are exactly that, simply random catastrophes. Whoopsie, somebody died again. But as believers, we do not subscribe to a randomness. We put our faith in God and therefore we do believe that everything happens for a reason. I urge everybody to read the Quran, even if you don't want to become a Muslim. You don't have to, but simply read the Quran as a warning. Ah, then forget them. So my people, remember, turn to Allah. What was the response? They began to say that you are a madman, you're a magician. And then they told him, out of all people, Allah could have not chosen except you. Why is it me? Wasn't he? Out of all people, you? They start to turn against him. Turn against him and make everyone else turn against him. And not only this, they even start to mock him. And they start to even mock those who followed him. Salam. So he continued telling his people, Look, my people, don't be in doubt. I am the messenger and I am warning you that worship Allah alone. What are you going to lose? Stop worshipping idols. Stop worshipping people. And do not worship the rich from amongst you. Because they had a problem. They used to worship the it's rich from amongst message. them. So then they turned to him and said, Okay, Salih, then bring to us a sign. We want a miracle. You call yourself a prophet, we want a miracle. So Salih turned back to them and said, Okay, good. You want a miracle and a sign? I will give you a miracle and a sign from my Lord if he wills. I am but a messenger from God. Salih turned around and said to them, my Lord says, anything you choose, you choose it. And I will do it for you bi'ithnillah, with the power of Allah. They said, we'll decide. He said, you decide. They said, anything. He said, you name it and it will happen. You choose. They said, okay, we now know what we want. You see this huge rock that's here? We want you to split it into two. And from the inside must come out a camel. The camel must be a female. Look at this. Now you be honest with me, something they believe that this is totally impossible. 
So Salih alayhi salam is listening to them. As he's listening, they had a feeling this man might be thinking he's going to come with this. So let's make it more difficult. So another one said, No, but not that's not it. We want the she camel to come out 10 months pregnant. So another one said, That's not it. But we want the she camel so big and gigantic that we've never seen before. And then another one popped up and said, And we want the she camel to be red color with a lot of with a lot of wool on her another one said and we want the she camel that she could drink the whole water of the valley and then another one Where's said we want the she camel to give us enough milk for the whole town and one describing from here another one describing from there this basically reminds me of richard dawkins a famous atheist who said he would need definitive proof of god but when they asked him what kind of proof of god would be sufficient for him he pivoted again of course first he said if god would appear to me that would be sufficient proof However, and then he debunked himself by saying, it could be, of course, an advanced alien civilization. So it could appear to me as God, but in reality, it is just aliens. So technically, I would never know. This is the atheist mind. No matter which proof you would show them, it would never be sufficient. They thought they just, you know, just a gathering Their hearts of are making sealed. fun of Salah, alayhi salam. And they were just making up something. Thought that Allah can't do it. Subhanallah. So Salih alayhi salam said, he finished? He said, yes. Salih alayhi salam said, and if I bring it, would you believe in me? Salih said, yes, of course. They thought that he can't. So Salih alayhi salam said, then let it be. Everyone get together. And one day they agreed, where everyone all came together, and all standing in front of the rock that they pointed at, and Salih asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take out that she camel the way they described it. The rock split, they watch it. What? A camel came out of it? What? So gigantic and big that they ran away from it. He loves saying And when big. this she camel used to walk, all the cattle and animals would run away. Ten months pregnant. With the colors they, they really asked say for, ten months pregnant? With the wool they asked for. With a description that asked for. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. They're looking at it. The community was split into two. Divided. The majority of them just kept looking. What did they say? This is magic. But you asked me. I made a dua. It came according to what you wanted. Now you want to say magic. But what happened? Some of the people started accepting. Said no, we believe. You are the messenger. Allah is one. We don't want to Should be enough anything bro. besides Allah. You would think. So it started working. MashaAllah. Salih said to them, هَذِهِ نَاقَةُ اللَّهِ لَكُمْ This is نَاقَةُ اللَّهِ The she camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For you as a miracle, as a sign, as you have asked. But don't you dare to harm it. Don't you dare to harm it. Don't you dare to do anything wrong to it or else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you a severe punishment. And that she camel, my brothers and sisters, they had a well they used to drink from. That well would produce enough water a day, enough for the people of that town. And that the camel would drink one day from the water and they would drink the other day. This is such an enormous camel and such a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would drink the water of an in, the entire people of Thamud. Yeah, but that's what they asked and for. And it had its right? whole day for drinking. That's the whole point. And the day when they weren't drinking from the water, they were actually drinking from the milk of this camel. Enough milk good. to give to the entire tribe of Thamud. And it was a living miracle. It is reported that because it was there every day for them to see, it was living in their midst. Every day a few people were accepting. They're seeing it's huge, it's powerful. The haughty, the wealthy, the powerful from amongst his people told those who had accepted his message. Do you know for certain that Saleh is actually a messenger? They said, yes, indeed. We believe in everything he has come with. We believe. So they responded, as for us, we disbelieve in what you've believed in. We don't want. We're still happy with what we're sitting with. The she camel will live. Among the people of the town, he used to live on the mountain. The day where it's turned to drink from the water, come down. 
I will drink the whole water in the world. Enough for the whole town. And the next day the people of the town will come and drink from the water. And then that she camel gave birth. And had another camel. And they saw that with their own eyes. Experienced that with their own eyes. So what happened? Those who became believers, their belief increased. And the disbelievers, their disbelief increased. It's quite Those amazing. Allah guides who He wills, and if the hearts are closed, nothing can change their perception. It's truly a miracle. As much science as you provide for the atheist mind, it's all ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. So therefore, the more proof you show them, the deeper they dig themselves into their own hole. Even their hearts, There's nothing those with enmity and pride, got together one day, and they realized, hold on a sec, looks like that Saleh is getting more popular. He's getting more followers. More people are following him. This she camel turned out to be an advantage for him, disadvantage for us. We thought we were making fun of the guy. It turned out to be true. And what's this? We can't live with a camel that one day is a whole day for her. She drinks. And then the other days for us. Before it used to be every day. Anytime you want to drink, you can't drink. But now there's one full day for the she camel. And one day for the town. Whenever the camel was walking, their camels ran away. Whenever the camel was walking, the cattle ran away. They started a rumor in the society, in the community, that now we need to sort this camel out. <laughs> one man decided, of course. that I want to do something here, and we need to sort it out. He managed to get support of another man. The two of them got support of another seven people. There were nine in total, and they decided, we're going to kill this camel. This just shows the juvenile state that we as humans are in. Not only the people back in the day, but even nowadays. People always want to do what they're not supposed to do. And news started spreading that people are deciding to kill the camel. Right. So Saleh alayhi salam warned them again. You dare touch the camel. If you touch the camel, there will be punishment coming. It will overtake you. Out of the whole nation of Samud, the ones who conspired to kill the camel were nine. And they called upon the worst one out of them. The scholars say his name is Qudar bin Salif. He was the one of the only people who had the encouragement and the motivation and the guts to turn against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then one day they waited for the she camel to come down from the mountains and those nine men were waiting for it. And when that she camel came down, they jumped in front of her. But they got so scared. Eight of them ran away. Beside Qudar, Lanatullah Alay, eight out of them, when they saw that camel the way she was walking, they ran. And Qudar started to laugh. So he hit the she camel on its legs, it fell down, and then they all jumped on it and killed it. Once they started in the cutting and the spearing and the arrowing of the camel, the she of this camel, Naqatullah, it cried out it cried out and the whole land was shaking from her cry she was crying for her child to warn her child of what they were doing and the child of the naqatullah it climbed up and ran away as they slaughtered the camel and it climbed up to the top of the mountain and it cried out itself for the killing of its mother it cried out three times. But then men were already placed in different locations. They caught the little one and slaughtered it. And wow. after killing it, they start to slaughter it and start spreading the meat to everyone. Mm. And everyone ate from that she camel, except Saleh and his followers. Allahu Akbar! These people just disobeyed Allah! And the punishment is coming! So Saleh when he heard that he ran to the city, he ran to the town looking to stop these people. But unfortunately it was too late. People were sitting down eating the meat of the camel. And then they looked at Saleh and they started to mock Saleh and say, what's next? They said, oh Saleh, here is what we've done to this camel. Now bring the punishment that you were promising us. Saleh alayhi salam. They want it, man. And They're cried. asking for he it. He started to cry and cry. Saleh alayhi salam came out and told his people, You have three days to enjoy yourself. 
three days to enjoy yourself. That's it. You are not going to live anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Salih for him and the believers to flee the country. And Salih alayhi salam walked away from the city of Thamud. And he went towards Palestine. Broken heart and sad over his people. Upset. The evening before he went, these nine people got together. And what did they do? They swore an oath between the nine of them that tonight we want to kill Saleh and his whole family. And in the morning, we will tell everybody that we They're don't know anything. Enough. We will pretend like we are one of them. When these nine men were meeting their meeting in secret, whispering to each other, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening to them. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is planning and his plan is hidden from them. After all, Allah subhanahu planner. wa ta'ala is the greatest of planners. Yep. His plan is the master plan. Exactly. And our plans are nothing in comparison to the plan of Allah subhanahu Zero. wa ta'ala. They fall into his plan. And then Allah says, take a look at what was the result of their own plot. They plotted the downfall of the one who was bringing them towards goodness. And Allah says, we in return destroyed them completely. How did the destruction come? And so on the first day, their faces became yellow. Second day, their faces became red. And then day three came and their faces turned black. So they start to scream and cry and wing and scream and shout. And then the shout. punishment came. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on them the awful cry in the morning on the fourth day, the exact deadline. They went to their bed safe in houses carved from solid bedrock. Nothing can destroy it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them with a sound wave. Very, very loud voice. This awful cry was so violent and powerful. It made the earth under them shake. It is said that it was so violent, it shook their insides so their hearts were falling. After moments of cry, as if nobody was living in Samud, it's a hundred deserted area. Thamud disbelieved in their Lord. So away with Thamud. Rasulullah was traveling with army and they passed by the ruins of Samud. He put his head down. He lowered his head. He not only lowered his head, but he made his camel ride faster through the valley. The valley where Thamud used to reside. And he told his companions to come quickly passed by this, by this uh, territory. So some of the Sahaba went in and they took some water from the wells of Samud. And they made some bread. Actually they mixed flour with that water to make bread. And they brought some of that water. Rasulullah told them, don't eat from it, don't eat from that bread and feed it to the camels and throw all the water that you brought. And do not go in there except if you are going to cry. Today when we go into the ruins of Samud or the ruins of Fir'aun or the ruins of the Romans or the ruins of the Greeks, we go and we smile and take pictures. Sure. And we are fascinated with the civilization of Romans and Greek civilization and the civilization of Fir'aun and the advancement of humanity. Rasulullah is saying, that water that you brought from Samud, don't even drink it. And that bread don't feel... Yeah, absolutely, because those civilizations should be a reminder for us. Look at the Roman Empire, look at the Greek Empire. At the peak, quote-unquote, of their civilization, they were at peak degeneracy as well. They didn't believe in one God. They were pagan in nature, and moreover, they worshipped their desires. They were involved in all kinds of sins. And God is ultimately just. This is why they've been wiped out. <laughs> Because it's evil. We should be very, and very don't careful. Don't go man. in Samud, except if you are going to cry. Why? You are going in and benefiting from the Ibra, the lesson. Why would you cry? Because you would look at what happened to these people when they disbelieved. Right. And you would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. And you would ask Allah to save you. So you would cry. Let's go back. 
Nein, man. Yeah, truly, because when we are going back, we're looking into those civilizations. Nobody seems to get a lesson out of it. They're looking at their architecture. They're looking at their warfare and whatnot. They're not reflecting upon why those civilizations truly fell. Are the ones who administered the execution of the camel. They don't want the answer. And the plan to kill Sayyidina Salih alayhi salam. How come the rest of the people of Samud were destroyed? Because they knew about the corruption and they did not stop it. Did they say, no, don't kill the camel? They didn't do that. What did they do instead? They started cheering. They became cheerleaders for the killing of the camel. Of course. They were the people who committed the crime, but they were people who were happily witnessing the crime. They loved when it. they were destroyed, completely destroyed, Sayyidina Salih salam, and his followers were saved. Allah saved them. And after Samud were destroyed, Salih salam, came back. He came back to his town that was empty, the ghost town. And he started speaking to the dead bodies. Then he, Salih salam, turned from them and said, Oh my people, I conveyed the message to you of my Rabb and I advised you, but very sadly, you do not like people who advise you. <laughs> and then Salih salam Nobody wants will migrate to, to Palestine to. and he will live in a city called Ramla. And Salih salam will die and pass away in Ramla. A period of time passes by and once again, mankind start to commit shirk starts to associate partners unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their focus was on celestial objects. They start to worship the stars. They start to worship the sun. They Anything but God. Anything and but God. they God, have man. idols as well. Wow. And this was the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a great prophet. A great prophet indeed. He was one of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was known as the father of the prophets and his name was Ibrahim alayhi salam hey, finally Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. As always guys, the Prophet series is very long, so I'm gonna cut it off here. Moreover, if I come across a bit low energy, guys, we are in the midst of fasting, in the midst of Ramadan, and now after over two weeks here, it's definitely draining the physical body, but it's elevating the spirituality. Thank God for that. However, it is not as easy as usual to record videos without drinking anything. So therefore, yet again, I'm going to cut it off here. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel by Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.